to cut out my first baby project. And before I cut, I wanted to show you a little um, trick or something that is tricky about multi-sized patterns like this one. Fortunately, on this pattern, each size has a different type of dashed or dotted line, which is really helpful. But the confusing thing is, let's look at newborn. See, newborn has a small dashed line, but you'll also see this newborn line here that's straight with the circle through it. The cutting line is the dashed line. So newborn actually comes all the way up here and turns, even though it's next to this small, I know that's confusing, but what these, these straight lines are, are fold lines. So that's showing where I'm gonna fold it after it's cut when I'm putting it all together. So for me, I'm cutting out the medium, and in this um, pattern company, medium is about a six month size. So the medium is what I'm doing, and you can see it's the longest dashed line, and you just have to pay attention. Um, it's easy to accidentally cut on the wrong thing, and I'll have to be careful. It's also confusing at the bottom a little bit. So, and let me just double check. Here's my medium. Medium, I said longest, longest dash line, but that's not that small. Medium is teeny dash, a little bit longer. So it's two sizes of dash lines. So that's what I'm cutting out on all the way down for all of my pieces. So I'm gonna do that next. Some people, because they wanna use one pattern for multiple sizes, I'll just show you how, that, how to do that. So I'm going to do this medium. Instead of cutting straight down to the medium, I'm going to cut little slashes like this. And then what I can do is fold out those extra sizes. So I've preserved the integrity of the pattern. So now it's a medium. But let's say I wanna go back and cut the extra large later. If you're a parent with two kids and you wanna use the same pattern for both children, or patterns are expensive, so I understand why you'd wanna do that. I personally would just rather buy another pattern, but um, you can do whatever you please. So this is how you would do it, and you would do it all the way around. So you're cutting in this way, and then you fold it out. And I always iron it to make sure I get it perfect so I don't have little hooky-doos like that. Um, but I'm gonna go ahead and cut it out on my medium. I'll show you another trick. Um, if you're just really struggling with the amount of lines on your pattern and uh, where to cut, take a brightly colored pen and mark it with the pen first. And this is what I did in sewing class all the time. So on my medium, I'm just going to trace my medium line. And on this, you can see how somebody could kind of get lost in all those lines. So I'm going to trace my medium real quick and make sure I stay on the right line. And then when you're cutting, you're less likely to make a mistake. All right, let me hold this up and let you see how that, is. isn't that a little easier to see where to cut now? Because I traced it with the red marker. So that's another um, easy way, especially as a beginner sewer, but if it's just so many, Grading lines can be so confusing, especially if you also have folding lines, stitching line, um, marking lines also on the pattern. Um, so go in and mark it, make your life easy. All right, I have my pieces all cut out. I'm doing, um, oops, I'm doing this little outfit with a sleeve in a different fabric. So it will look like this. This will be the little sleeve. And I'm going to applique on this. I wanna make a little ladybug. And I'm going to use this for the ladybug's wings. I'm gonna just do a plain black. We're gonna start putting together our little baby dress. Um, I appliqued in the last video, so if you wanna see how applique works, I will put a little marker up here for you can, so you can find it, or it's in the description below. Um, so the next thing in our dress, once it's all cut out, the very first thing I'm going to do is search the edge of the sleeve. So this is the sleeve. I finished the edge off um, and, and I've ironed it up and I'm going to top stitch it down. Now, if you, the other thing you could do instead in, of finishing this off is fold it, pardon me a second here, fold it twice. So you would fold it up a quarter of an inch, fold it again, and top stitch it down like that. So you have a narrow hem. I'm doing a little bit wider hem. 
Um, it's a little flatter and softer for the baby, so that's my preference since I have a serger. If you don't have a serger, then you can um, zigzag it and turn it up, or you can do the double roll. So I'm gonna, I've already um, serged both. I'm going to stitch them down, and I'll show you when I'm through hemming. All right, so here are the two sleeves hemmed. And now I'm going to go to the body of the dress. So I'm just gonna roll around over here where my dress is to the ironing board. So here's my little dress pieces and my bloomers. So I'm going to take my front and back dress and there's a couple ways we can do this. Um, I'm going to go ahead and just serge my edges and put it together and press open the seams, but you could serge your seams together if you wanted to, but for um, the project that I'm working on, I would rather um, have pressed open seams. So I'm going to go ahead and just finish off seam allowances right now with the serger. So that's my next step. Here are my dress pieces. I did not finish off the neckline or the hem yet on these. I, I want to assemble it first and then finish that. But I did do the little sleeve um, where the raglan sleeve attaches in the side seam and I went ahead and did the um, edge of the sleeve too. I wish I would have done this first and then hemmed it, but I didn't. And in the end, it's not gonna make a difference, but that would have been um, a better way to do it. So if you're doing a raglan sleeve like this, or if you're doing the same pattern, finish off your little edge of the sleeve and your um, hemline with your zigzag or serger first, then put in your finish hem. That would, that would be the best way to do it. I'm going to now pin the sleeves right sides together in, and I will show you how that looks once it's pinned. So this is the front of my little dress, and I've taken one sleeve edge to the arm's eye and pin them together. So here's the other end of the sleeve. It's not attached yet. And I'm going to actually stitch this down on both sides. So they're both stitched or both pinned. And once I stitch that, then I'm going to pin this other side to the back and it'll kind of make a big circle. Then I can, so um, I'm gonna finish off this little underneath here and put the side seam. So next, is top stitching these, or sorry, just stitching these on at the seam allowance, and then I will pin again. show you my sewing buddy in here. There she is, Princess Peaches. Hey, Peach. Peaches. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so here's the little sleeves stitched in the front. There they are. And this is going to get turned down later. We're going to put assemble the dress more first, but this will actually be pressed in. So you can't see it, but isn't that cute? So this is how it looks where I've stitched it and now I'm pinning to the back. So here's the um, back side of the dress. So you have a bodice, a sleeve, a bodice, and then back around to a sleeve so it'll make a circle. So here are all my little sleeve parts sewn together so you can see it made a circle. Here's the little sleeves onto the bodice. Super simple. So now I'm going to come back. And of course, this is all right sides together and I'm gonna just do my side seams. So I'm gonna line up my two side seams on each side and stitch those down. This particular pattern is 5 8 seam allowance, so it's super easy. After I do this, I'm gonna go and give all of my seams a nice press um, just because it's gonna make the finished project prettier. So next, side seams. Okay, so um, real quick while I'm at the machine, I wanna show you this side seam has, it's not full bias, but it is at an A, an angle, it's an A line. And because of that, and the direction it's cut, often what one side will 
uh, just fit differently than the other, the front to the back. So in this case, the back is a little tighter and the front is a little looser. Um, they are the same size when they were cut, but serging and that sort of thing might make one stretch a little bit. So when you pin it, pin top, bottom and middle and make them fit together. Unless you made a cutting error, they should go back together. You don't want to stretch it. You don't want to come down to the end and have one hanging off longer than the other, whether it's top or bottom. All right, so make sure you, when you pin, you're being really accurate and careful. All right, I've got my side seams sewn together, the 5 8 inch. I'm going to press them open in a minute like this, but first I'm just going to lock in my stitches and iron it flat. I'm going to iron over these stitches right here real quick just to lock them in um, and make for a prettier seam when I go to press it open. So I'm going to iron that on each side. And because this is a raglan sleeve, you don't have a shoulder seam. Um, you just have a big neck opening, so I don't have to worry about pressing a shoulder seam. But I will press, sorry about the banging, I've got the camera on the ironing board. Um, I am going to press my little sleeve parts. Give each of these, and now you can see it's a little sleeve. So I'm going to open that up. Just press on the stitching line. I'm going to do that all the way around, making sure I don't crimp anything else in there. I don't want to make any permanent wrinkles that I don't need. All right, and then once I've done that to the whole thing, I'm going to open it up and press this open. So let me get that set up. And there's lots of ways to do this. One is to lay it over the edge of the ironing board like this. Which I think is the easiest. So let's just pull it over. Make sure everything's smooth. And because I already pressed that once um, flat, now when I go to press it open, I won't get any bubbles. So now I'm pushing it open with my fingers first. And now I'm ready to take the iron to it and press it open. And I want that seam pressed open so that when I'm ready to turn this back, I'm going to top stitch this, but this is actually going to get turned under like that to finish off this little um, underarm. It'll um, hold down this seam too, so it's going to flip over like that. So here's the seam after pressing. You can see how nice that makes it. I'm going to go ahead. Um, I think the next thing for me, the easiest thing would be to go ahead and serge around my hem, making sure that I keep this seam pressed open, that it doesn't flip as I go around with the serger, but I'm just going to finish off that edge because the hem's easy. And I'm going to do the same thing up here, but this one has to be top stitched first before I go around that whole um, edge. So my decision is I'm going to go ahead and finish off this little under sleeve so that I can serge, serge all at once. Got my little raglan sleeve and underarm pinned on one side, and I just want to show you what that looks like. I've pushed the seam allowance to the dress side away from the sleeve, so the seam allowance is here, and I'm going to top stitch around the whole sleeve down here. It's just turned under, and this has 5 8 inch seam allowance in it. I'm going to stitch this at about a quarter of an inch, maybe even a little less because I don't want it to be really big and obvious on these baby clothes, but I don't have it turned under quite 5 eighths an inch under, under here. Because we've got two different curves going on, I don't want to get bunching under the arm. I want it to lay smooth. It does have some give, but because I finished that seam allowance off already on the inside, that prevents it from having lots of give. So you can see here's my seam allowance. It's about 3 eighths of an inch. So if I stitch it a quarter of an inch, that's going to Catch, um, catch the seam allowance, give it a nice even look. It's also going to hold the sleeve seam allowance against the body of the dress so it doesn't peek through when it's being worn. All right, so I'm next, top stitching. 
All right, so I'm at the machine and I'm uh, doing this. The easiest way with this big open toe foot is to put the edge um, that I want to top stitch along against the open toe and move my needle position. So currently my needle position gives me a little over an eighth of an inch, but I'm gonna just scoot it over a tiny bit. Let's see. And I'm gonna check it. And that's about exactly where I want it. So now I'm ready to start top stitching. And even if you're top stitching, don't forget to back stitch. And pull out your pins. And then just let it follow through. I'm not pushing it, I'm guiding it. I'm just making sure I don't get bubbles in my fabric. And I'm going to do this all the way around now. You can see how this is kind of bunchy. So when I get to here, I'm going to have to open up the dress for the top stitching. It, but it's really not too bad, even on this small of a garment. So I'm going to go all the way around. I'll show you when I'm finished. I just want to show you um, here at the little underarm. Let me see if I can get the camera in. Hold on. Let me straighten it out. I just want to show you here at the underarm, it can kind of get bunchy. It can look like, sorry, I'm holding the camera, like you're getting little wrinkles, but actually all that matters is that it's straight at the needle. So if your fabric is nice and smooth at the needle, and that's one of the reasons I put my hand in here is to hold it, all of this bunchiness is past it. You, you're not going to sew in a little buckle or a little bubble and it'll be fine. So I'm going to just stitch a minute so you can see, keeping that edge. Sink my needle, pull out the pin, and you can arrange your fabric, smooth it out as you go. The other thing you have to make sure is because you've got a little circle is that you're not catching anything on the underneath side, which I'm not, but I do have a pin that fell out, and keep going around the circle. Rotate a little bit just to make it nice and smooth. Pull everything out. And it looks like a bump, but what it really is is just all the seam allowance underneath. And stitching it's going to smooth it out. And if you need to stop to, you don't have to sew in one solid motion. It's fine to stop and readjust, which I do a lot and see how I can just pull this with my hand and make it nice and smooth. Now I'm coming up to the sleeve and see the sleeve wants to go over the toe. So I'm gonna sink my needle and adjust it again, making sure that the sleeve slides under the toe of the presser foot. And now I'm in the home stretch. Now it's just a straight, straight piece up. And here's the little sleeve. Let me see if I can get this to show up better. There's the little sleeve with the finished edge. And the top stitching hardly shows up at all. It looks nice. And I just have to finish my threads. Trim off all those threads. All right. I'm going to do the other sleeve and then we'll do some searching. I have both sleeves done. I'm now just going to finish off my hem. Move my serger up a little bit. Um, I have my seams pressed open. I just want to make sure when I'm stitching that I don't fold over any of those seam allowances as I go around. So I'm going to do that along the hem and along the neckline edge. All right, now I'm doing the neckline. And you can see the seam allowance it was already top stitched down. You just want to make sure as you go across that you don't get a fold over and just keep going around the circle. If you don't have an overlock machine, you can zigzag it. Um, you could also finish this off with bias tape on the inside. There's lots of options. The easiest is to zigzag or to overlock. This is so cute. Look at how cute this little dress is. I mean, look at that. Adorable. Okay, so now I'm going to press up my hem and stitch the hem in. The last thing will be making the casing for the elastic and this little dress is done. 
All right, I was, um, when I did the little sleeve, I moved my needle position over first to the left when I did the right sleeve and to the right when I did the left sleeve. Now I put it back in the center for um, my straight stitching. I'm sewing with a straight stitch three length, which I've done the whole garment in. And now we're just gonna go around. I'm starting at the side seam and um, this is, I have pressed in an inch deep hem. I'm sewing at three quarters of an inch, so the hem's gonna be down here right below my little ladybugs. And I'm just gonna go around the circle. All right, I have the hem in. That's what it looks like. This is how it looks on the back side. It's all done, and now we're ready to do our neckline. So, um, last part's the easy, and we're finished. All right, so the dress is completely done except for the little casing at the neckline and um, some shirts, and I cut out a strip just to show you. Some uh, patterns will have a piece of fabric to make the casing out of where you sew the fabric on, flip it to the back, sew it down again, and you make a casing. Now this, this is just a scrap, this is not, um, how this pattern is set up. This pattern expects you to just fold under. Now, um, if you hold this up, you can see there's a curve here. So when I go to fold this down, um, this edge is smaller than the edge I'm trying to attach it to or to the piece of fabric. It gets wider as it goes. So I, you have to um, line it up first at all of your seams. And it's just about a 5 eighths of an inch I'm using quarter inch elastic and I'm going to pin this. This is the inside of the dress, but I'm going to pin it on the outside. And I'm going to do that to every seam first. And then I will go back to the middle part and you can see how it's, it doesn't fit perfectly, but it's not terrible. And what I'm going to do is I find the center and I pin it down. And then from the outside, you can see this fullness. It's just, there's more fabric on this side than there is on the side I'm stitching it to. And if you're not careful, you'll get little folds and buckles. One of the ways you can do that, normally I always do all of my top stitching with the right side up because that's the pretty side of your fabric and you wanna make sure, or your, your garment, you wanna make sure everything looks right. In this case, if you put the right side down, the feed dogs will help ease in some of this fullness. So I'm going to try it, let me lay this down so you can see. <clears throat> see those little buckles right there? That's the difference between the width of this piece of fabric and what I'm trying to stitch it to on this edge. So the feed dogs will help ease that in. Now the good thing is elastic's going here and it's going to gather up anyway. And you're going to have little pleats like that, which is going to be adorable. But you don't want on the right side of your fabric a fold over like this that's stitched down. You don't want that kind of pleat. It's okay if you have gathers like this, but you don't want them stitched down. You want them to be free moving on the elastic. So I'm gonna pin this, stitch it, and then show you um, the elastic feeding. Okay, so I'm all pinned. Whoops, I just pulled a pin out with my presser foot. And that's an important one. It's the center of the fabric where it curves and the fabric would tend to get short there if it weren't pinned down. I always start these, um, here's the front of my dress. So when I start stitching, I wanna stitch in the back because I'm leaving a little opening for um, feeding the elastic through. So I'm gonna start on the back side and I'm going to leave a little hole. So I'm not going to meet. I'm gonna leave a little space where the two stitches don't meet so I can fit my elastic in. And this is 5 eighths inch. I'm not gonna stitch all the way at the 5 eighths. I'm gonna move it down. That's how deep my fabric is, my fold over. I'm gonna move it down to about a half inch. And you just wanna make sure you're catching all of your layers. Always back stitch on this because these stitches will wanna pull out when we're doing our elastic feeding. Oh, and I've got, I did put it to the right side up so I have a little more, um, I have to do a little more work on my end. If I flipped over, I could do the right side down and let the feed dogs do some of the work, but this way I can see what's happening and I know if I'm getting a fold over. 
I just, it's hard to break that habit once you've started it. And here I can see some fullness already happening. And I'm sewing this on my free arm. I don't have my throat plate on. And I'm going to, it's a tiny piece too. That's the other thing with baby clothes is they're little. So let's see. I'm going to pull this pin out. And I'm using my fingers to help ease in, but I'm not making any folds. And the first one's eased in. First sleeve. Now I'm on the front side of the dress. Whoops. want to stitch that into the stitching line. Now I'm not pulling my fabric through the machine, I'm just manipulating the top layer of fabric so that it goes through smoothly. And I'm back around in my circle, here's where I started. And you can, you can kind of see how the fabric wants to push in front of the feed dogs. You can actually sink and raise your presser foot and um, smooth that back out if you see it pushing a lot. And I just need a little opening to get my elastic in. All right, so now I've got my casing. And I don't know how well you can see that, but there's the hole that it's going to go through. Here's the back side. And I always check to make sure that I caught it all the way and that I didn't have a piece of fabric, a piece where the fabric slipped up and I'll have a little hole and I caught everything. Yep, it's all caught. So now we're going to feed our elastic. So your pattern will either state somewhere in the directions how long to cut your elastic for the size, or it will come with a pattern piece like this. Now I normally don't even cut these out, I just measure it on the tissue um, and write it down somewhere, but I went ahead and cut it out just uh, for demonstration purposes so you can see this is how long it says I need the elastic to be for this little dress. So I cut my elastic out and you don't stretch it when you measure, you make sure it's flat and you don't stretch it to cut it. So this is it. And I've got the safety pin on one end. And I'm, I'm gonna tell you straight up front as I start, this seems too long. Um, when I look at the neckline and the elastic, the elastic for something like this, depending on how big the neckline is, will be like half um, the width. And this definitely is not. So I'm going to, I was trimming my threads there, hold on. Get arranged so you can see. So here's my little neckline. Here's my piece of elastic. So if I fold this in half, this is all the gathering it's going to do. About one sleeve's worth of gathering for this whole neckline. So the neckline opening will be this big. So if you think about a little baby, it's tiny shoulders, that's too big. So I have a feeling when I'm through feeding this through, I'm actually going to trim this down a little bit to make it the neckline smaller. It's big enough that it'll stretch to go over the baby's head fine. That's not going to be an issue. It's, it's big enough you could slip it right down off its shoulders and down its waist. It's a nice wide opening. The problem is we don't want it slipping on the baby's shoulders when it's wearing it. So here's my little pin and I've got to find my opening. Here's my opening. So I go to the inside where the hole is and I feed the pin through. Now wherever you have a seam, it's going to want to slip behind this fabric here. So you're going to have to really feel for the opening and there's quite a few layers and it may take a couple tries separating it to get it through I can getting it between layers I can feel it and this is the thing that takes the longest but if you don't have the safety pin this is the elastic will just fold up in there and you'll never get anywhere and you can actually let me poke it I'm going to fold it the opposite direction. That should make an opening. Yep, it did, and I'm through. So now I'm gonna go through. Now this time, the um, seam allowance goes the opposite direction, so it'll be easy to fit it through. 
So I'm just fishing it through like that and you can feel it in there. Now, you could, because the elastic is smaller than the neckline opening, you could actually pull your elastic, the other tail, on the inside. So I always take the tail and pin it down. And you want to make sure you don't have any twists, so it's completely smooth. You do not want your elastic to twist inside there. So a couple things to think about. So I'm coming to this other seam. Now the seam allowance is facing this direction, so it's going to slide through really easy. I don't have to worry about it at all. This next one, the seam allowance is the opposite direction, so I'm going to have to do a little poking and prodding. And I'm just going to show you, see how that's starting to gather up? Isn't that cute? And I haven't even got it all pulled through yet. Oh, that one went through really easy. No problems. Almost around. Now, if you miss, like if you, if I had a little spot where I didn't catch my under fabric, this is when you'd notice it because it would actually pop up as you're trying to feed your elastic through. And I am back around. So now I'm going to pull this so that the elastic's coming in. See how big that neckline is? I'm almost all the way around. That's just way too big for a baby. So now I'm at the other end. I'm keeping my elastic flat and I'm just pulling in the extra easement. Okay, so that's currently how it is and I, that's with, I have tails hanging out and I'm going to have more tails than that. That's just too big. So I'm going to take off a couple inches off of this, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my two tails, pull them out, because see the elastic stretches so much that looks more appropriate still looks kind of big but I think that's a lot better look at how and look at how much elastic I have left over so normally the tails would be like this and you'd stitch them together and all of this fabric would start all of this elastic would be still inside that casing but that's just huge okay so I'm going to trim off a whole bunch of this I'm going to pull this out. This is about where I want it to be. So I'm going to put a pin to hold it for now. And then I need to pull these tails out a little bit more so that I can get it to the machine to stitch them together. So here's the here's where I'm going to stitch it together, but I'm not I don't want this shape. I want them to lay flat on top of each other, so I'm going to just rotate it like that. And I have all these tails. I'm going to trim them off after I stitch. Stick a pin where I want to stitch, and now I'm going to go to the sewing machine and zigzag it. And set up my machine for a zigzag, and I'm going to move this over so you can see it. All right, so here's my little piece that I'm going to stitch. I'm going to slide it right under the foot and sink my needle, and that holds it so that when I pull my pin out, nothing happens. Now I'm not stretching this at all, I'm leaving it flat. And I'm just going to zigzag straight across. And you want to do this a whole lot. Because this will want to pull apart. And then I'm going to slide it over and just do a little bit right next to where I just stitched. Alright, now I'm going to trim my threads. a doggy barking at the back door wondering where I am and why I haven't let her in. I'm going to move my, take that pin off. So here's my two tails, this tail, and I'm going to trim off. Make sure you're trimming the tail and not the actual elastic. And then here's the other tail. So now there's my little elastic and now I can just pull on the shirt, whoops, and pull it back inside. And now you can see there's my hole. So now I'm going to go back to the machine to the straight stitch. And I'm going to stitch up my hole. Make
make sure my machine actually um, it has a little function that keeps it from sucking its threads away which is really awesome but most machines don't so make sure your tails are long when you start so you don't have a problem with your machine and I'm stitching right on my old stitches but I'm going to go ahead and do a little back stitch and you want to make sure when you're stitching this that you're not catching the elastic so I'm stitching right below the elastic it now my little dress is done I'm going to trim up my threads and I'll show you the finished product all right so here's our adorable little dress you can see the little sleeves the hem the applique I did um, the medium which is supposed to be about a six month size so this is the dress finished now I'm going to start the little bloomers and we'll have a completed outfit.